Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Mech Lab, where we try to be a better mech commander every day. But today I wanted to talk about different design philosophies for long-range support units. Uh, as you can see, I've sort of color-coded the different um, sort of archetypes of these different units. So when, when we're talking about a long-range support unit, we're talking about something that has dedicated a large amount of its tonnage to long-range weapons. Firstly, we have glass cannon direct fire units. So um, the Jaeger mech and this blackjack are good examples. The Jaeger mech, you can see, has virtually no armor. For a 65-ton mech, it literally has less armor than a blackjack, which is 20 tons lighter than it. Um, they both have significant amounts of their tonnage dedicated to long-range weapons, uh, some AC5s and AC2s, uh, as well as uh, the Blackjack just has two AC2s. Whether or not you like the AC2 as a weapon, uh, most people think it's not very good. It is a long-range weapon, and these two mechs sort of have a similar design philosophy. Uh, they don't put a lot of tonnage into armor or speed. They put most of it into direct long-range fire weapons. In the case of the Blackjack, I think that it is probably a little bit better of a mech overall. It just has armor more well distributed. Uh, it doesn't quite dedicate as much of its tonnage to guns and has a little bit more armor. I think durability is very important on a direct fire mech. I think that it's much, much more important than the next class that we'll talk about. Uh, but you can also see that they do have a little bit of their tonnage dedicated to close-in point defense weapons. The Blackjack has much more heavily de dedicated itself to this close-in range so that it can fight at that long range, but then if the enemy closes with it, it's still dangerous. The next type of unit that we'll talk about is the long range indirect fire mech. These are units that have given significant amounts of tonnage to indirect fire weapons, like long range missiles. You could also use this for mechs that use thunderbolts. You could also talk about mortars, which are kind of an entirely different beast. Most people, we'll use LRMs. So the two classic units that we talk about when we're thinking of a dedicated indirect fire support are the LRM carrier and the longbow. These are both units that you do not want the enemy to even be able to see because they are so very fragile that anything really even just looking in their direction is probably going to blow them up pretty quick. What these units give you is an incredibly cheap fire support platform that you can really spam a lot of. Now, a, a slightly different variation on this kind of unit is the Archer. Now, the Archer is not actually, I would say, a dedicated indirect fire mech. Uh, it has medium lasers to fight in close. It has battle fists, which makes it pretty good at melee. It has plenty of armor. It has over 200 armor. So a lot of its battle value is dedicated to armor and the medium lasers that it carries. So you can see you can get almost two LRM carriers for the price of a single archer, which makes the archer not as good of an investment if all you want is just that indirect fire support. Maybe you have some units with tags, or you have taken a few dedicated spotter units like a Savannah Master that can get a very high TMM while only walking. So these units here kind of need a bit of support. They, they want something to give them uh, that spotting capability. They don't want to be anywhere near the enemy. If the enemy has gotten onto your LRM carriers, you're in trouble. They're going to die, and all of that battle value that you have in those LRM-20s is going to be obliterated. But they can be very effective, especially in something like, say, City Fight, or a larger map that has a lot of uneven terrain, where you can hide them. Maybe you can even hide them in two or three different places, uh, just behind one high hills. Then your enemy has to go and hunt them down, which wastes their time, it wastes their firepower, as they're going to have to send their scout units out to find you. Whereas the archer doesn't really need as much support and it can fulfill that battle line role. So it's sort of a better generalist. It really comes down to your battle plan when you're building your force, which one is going to be a better fit. I personally would probably take the archer philosophy where it's a more flexible unit that can perform that battle line role. And then sort of, you know, after it's taken a few hits, it can retreat behind a hill somewhere and perform that indirect fire support. Uh, being able to share damage across your lance is very important 
for consistently attaining victory, whereas if you are relying on LRM carriers en masse, you may be in for a bad surprise when the enemy has a lot of fast-moving units, or if it's a very open map where they can just get access to your LRM carriers immediately. I wanted to go over just a few other types of units that fulfill the first role that we went over in sort of a different way. The Jäger mech fulfills the long-range support role by being very cheap and not putting a lot of points into armor, but it's actually not that effective in the role. Being a direct fire mech requires you to be in line of sight of the enemy, so having very thin armor makes it so that you are not going to be particularly effective in your role. So instead we have something like the Awesome that has uh, a little bit less overall range, but it is not only more heavily armored, but it also is an entirely energy-based design, which increases its durability by a lot. So the Awesome is a very good direct fire support mech, but as you can see, uh, it has put even less emphasis on movement compared to other designs. It really is just going to walk into a position and fire those PPCs. Some mechs will put more resources into being able to fire their weapons more consistently, whereas some will not. Maximizing your firepower every single turn and being able to just fire all your weapons without gaining any heat is valuable, but you end up paying more battle value for that privilege. So having a few points more heat than what you can cool can give you a discount on your battle value, which is valuable in and of itself. A unit like the Hollander is dedicated to bringing just one big gun and doesn't really have a lot of points sunk into durability or speed. A 35 ton mech doesn't really pay very much tonnage to have a 5.8 movement speed. Uh, so the Hollander kind of fits into the next role that we'll be talking about, as does the Huron Warrior, and that is the Skirmisher Sniper. These units have some emphasis on mobility, or they might have a large emphasis on mobility, while also having a large emphasis on long-range weapons. And the philosophy really is that if you are faster than your opponent and have a lot of long-range guns, you can kite them, you can constantly move back or move into a better position to outrange your opponent and uh, it also allows you to get into position faster, right? You can climb hills, you can move through forest more quickly and get into a good firing position before the enemy can sort of reach that area that you are going to engage them in. For example, if there's a, uh, a hill on your side of the map and you want to climb up there, and use it as a sniping perch. An Awesome is probably going to take two or three turns to get up there, whereas a Hollander might only take one turn. If you look at the Huron Warrior, it's kind of similar to the Awesome. It's dedicating a lot of its tonnage to armor, it's dedicating uh, a lot of its tonnage to the long-range weapons, and it can't quite fire them every turn. And, you know, similarly to, you know, the small laser is kind of an afterthought. The medium pulse laser is a bit more meaty and has a bit more punch. But then again, we're also talking about a much later era mech. It's just that Gauss rifles didn't exist uh, up until past the era when the awesome was really being used most frequently. Now, the last type of unit that we're talking about, they are also skirmishers, but they put more of their tonnage into mobility. Uh, so they're even better at getting into those hard to reach places, they're better at establishing a sniper's perch, and they're better at escaping and kiting the enemy and keeping them at a distance so that they can keep using their long-range weapons to better effect than the enemy. For example, if a wolverine is trying to chase down a griffin, the griffin wants to constantly be retreating to keep the wolverine out of range. The wolverine might be able to get off a few large laser shots at long range, assuming it's the 6M or 6K, or similarly the AC5 might be able to get off some shots, but the griffin really wants to keep those short range weapons out of range of it. It doesn't want the wolverine to close at all. So the griffin 1N is 
very much a dedicated kiting unit. It's designed to stay at long range and use its range to either get a good flank. It can use that mobility to move up the flank and has the long range to still hit you even if it's at the very edge of the board. While your battle line is in the center, the griffin can sort of move past them and get rear shots or side arcs in their sensitive opened parts. But if you compare the 1N to the 2N, you'll see that it still has a sort of similar design philosophy, but it's dedicated a significant amount of tonnage instead of to using the LRMs to SRMs. Now, these are two different uh, eras of mech, obviously still right, um, but if, if this Griffin archetype had the same tech, the you know, double heat sinks, the endo steel chassis, the ferrofibrous armor, it would still have LRMs instead of the SRMs. It would have maybe uh, an LRM 15 or four or five LRM 5s, and it's still concentrating on that long range firepower. Whereas the Griffin 2N is a little bit more similar to the original Blackjack. This is a unit that it has the two AC2s, which are long range weapons, but it has that close-in complement of weaponry. It can defend itself if the enemy closes. And it fills that skirmisher role where it can fight at the long range, and then, hey, maybe it wants to close in for a particular turn where there's a vulnerable enemy, where it can use its mobility to really get in there. And it makes these units more skirmishers than dedicated long-range support units. That is their job. They're, they're sort of like cavalry, right? They're, their job is to harry the enemy around the edges of the fight, and if the enemy decides to go and deal with them by sending their, their battle line units over towards them, they have the mobility to retreat and stay away. But for this type of unit, this sort of philosophy of design, you want to use that mobility to always stay at long range. Whereas these two types of mechs, where they're more of a skirmisher with some close range and some long range weapons, they're more so designed to play the range bands when it favors them most and use their combination of mobility, decent durability, and firepower at all ranges to engage in the most favorable circumstance possible for them. And when you're building a list, forming a lance or a combined arms force, you really should consider taking a mixture of all of these types of units. You probably want some durable units to sit in the back and provide direct fire support. You probably want perhaps one or two units that have some indirect fire ability, or at the very least, just very long range firepower, such as the Hollander or Huon Roria, which are very, very long range, you know, range 14 and 15 medium range on their main armament. And then you probably also want some cavalry units that are good at sort of getting in and exploiting enemy weaknesses when the moment is appropriate. The type of sniper philosophy that I don't like at all is glass cannon direct fire support. I think that it just doesn't really work very well. They can't really fulfill their role. Even though they're cheap, they have all of these battle value points sunk into these weapons, and there's a good chance that a Jaeger mech being hit in the arm is going to lose one of its armaments immediately uh, if they're hit with, say, a PPC or just a couple of shots of any kind in those arms. And it's not like you can just remove the armor from the center torso and side torsos, because they all have ammo in them. So if you get hit in those areas, they're going to explode from having ammo, and it's even worse. So in my personal opinion, I think that the best types of units out of these are all or nothing. They, they, they are dedicated to a specific type of support, either long-range support, with lots of armor at sort of a, a medium to long range, either PPCs or ER PPCs, or maybe a combination of Gauss and ER large lasers or PPCs, or long range missiles are also always good. Uh, and I think that you probably want at least one or two of these sort of tankier long range mechs that can sort of sit in the back and initiative sync. 
without being in a lot of danger because they have the armor to weather a few hits and they have the firepower that they want to be standing still so that they get the best shots possible. And then I think that the the other really good type of unit is sort of like the Blackjack or the, the Griffin 2N, the sort of um, very flexible units that have some long-range firepower they have they have good mobility they have good armor uh, and they have the ability to close in and use their very efficient and very cheap on battle value weapons when there is a moment that they can exploit uh, medium lasers are a very very efficient weapon so having a complement of them on a skirmisher is a really really good way of giving that mech some very effective firepower for very little tonnage, very little heat, and very little battle value. And as you can see, you know, the Griffin 2N is certainly a much better mech, but you pay so much battle value compared to the Blackjack that it's almost not worth it, in my opinion. You can have almost two Blackjacks for the cost of one Griffin, and that only gets worse as you add uh, gunnery skill and piloting skill in things like the MRC competitive formats where you might be limited in the number of mechs that you can take. I think that these more premium units that have more flexibility are even more valuable and might be weighted more favorably compared to something like an awesome that is not very flexible. It kind of just has one job. If it's very heavy on terrain, the awesome probably isn't going to be as effective. Whereas, you know, uh, an LRM carrier is also not very effective in cases of an open terrain ball. Compare that to something like the Archer, which is following a design philosophy a little bit more similar to the Blackjack, where it has a couple of weapons for in close, it has good long-range firepower, and it's putting tonnage into mobility and armor. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's particularly super mobile, but it's more mobile than an awesome. I think that the Archer is a really solid all-rounder that can kind of be very flexible. So those are just my thoughts about sort of different design philosophies for long-range support units. If you have any thoughts yourself, please leave them in the comments down below. I always love to hear other people's thoughts about things, and it helps me and others on the channel become better mech commanders. So thank you very much for stopping by the Mech Lab today. Please like and subscribe. If you know anyone who is into, uh, you know, gaming content and things like that, I would love if you would send them a quick little link just uh, to... Anyways, thank you everyone for stopping by today. If you have any different ideas or questions, comments, leave them down below, please. I love to hear everything I can from the community about how to become a better mech commander if you have any suggestions on topics you want me to cover in the future. I would also love to hear that. And if you know anyone else who's trying to become a better mech commander or who is into different gaming content and the like, please share the content with them. Any support is appreciated. As always, please like and subscribe and have a lovely day.